So let's take a look at a more practical example of how we can use this effect in a scene, slightly more practical. So I'm going to open this scene uh, called Hand Scene Start. And let's take a look at what's going on in this scene. It's a very simple scene. I did a kind of a hasty uh, hand model with very simple rigging on it and animation. And if I play it, it's moving over a grid of particles. Now these particles are the cloud type particles, so they don't react to gravity. Um, and, uh, and also the uh, cloud type particles don't have any collisions built into them. The only reason I turn, you know, the only reason I'm not using collisions is it'll make the scene move a lot faster. So you don't have to wait for it forever to update. But uh, you could turn on collisions if you wanted to. So uh, in this scene, I have a shader set up called Hand Shader. If I open this up in the Attribute Editor, it's just a simple Lambert shader. There's nothing special about it. Um, Maya is giving some of its weird uh, error messages as usual, but we're all used to that, so we'll just ignore it. Um, I'm going to go into the Textures tab, and I have a file here. Uh, this is a file texture I created. I'm going to middle mouse drag it from the Textures tab over the color section of the hand shader. And let's uh, take a look at what's going on here. Let me hide the particles for a second. So the way the texture works is I have a grayscale value. So this gray that is applied to most of the hand is just a 50% gray. So that means the values are like 128 for red, green, and blue. And then on the palm, I have a white texture. So this the value of this is 1 or 100% or 255, 255, 255, however we want to look at it. And on the fingertips, I have absolute black. So that's a value of 0 or 0, 0, 0, depending on how you look at it or 0%. So if I go back into Maya, we can see that the fingertips are black, the palm is white, and the rest is gray. And so what I want to do is I want to have the fingertips, the black parts of the texture, attract end particles, and I want the palm, the white part, to repel end particles, and I want the gray part to have no effect on the end particles. So let's make the end particles visible again. So here we go. So I have the texture applied to the hand, but the hand at the moment is not a rigid surface, so it's not going to interact with the end particles. So I'm going to select the hand geometry, go to the end dynamics menu, and choose end mesh create passive collider. Remember the end particles don't have collisions turned on, so they're not going to collide with the hand, but now that the hand is a passive collider, it can emit force fields that will influence the position of the uh, end particles. So if I go to the end rigid shape tab, this is connected to the hand geometry itself, and I'm going to go to the, you know, scroll down, find force field generation, again turn this to single sided, and I'll leave the magnitude at 1, I'll set the field distance to 8 so it's quite obvious what's going on. Let's uh, move the attribute editor off to the side for a moment. And move the height crusade. Play the scene. Now you can see how the hand, since it's emitting a force field, is repelling all of the end particles that come within a certain distance. So let's rewind the scene, and now I'm actually going to connect the texture to the force field magnitude. So if I bring up the attribute editor for the end rigid shape node, and I have the textures tab of the hypershade visible so that I can see my texture, I'm going to scroll down in the attribute editor for end rigid shape to the force field maps, make sure it's set to texture, middle mouse button drag, file one over field magnitude map. And again, now I'm going to select the file texture, and in its attribute editor, I'm going to use the same expression that I did before for the alpha offset. So I'm going to select alpha offset, type equals minus 0 0.5 times, whoops, sorry, 0 0.5 times file1, that's the name of this node, dot alpha gain. Yes, and semicolon, press enter, now the texture is added, so I can modulate alpha gain and alpha offset updates automatically. 
So let's set the alpha gain to five. Move these guys out of the way and play the scene. And now this is kind of cool because you can see how the fingertips are going to suck the N particles towards them and the palm at the same time is pushing the N particles away. Now the N particles have a conserved value of one, meaning their conservation of energy is set to one. And that basically means that once they start moving, they kind of keep moving off into the scene. But I like to have it's I'd like to have them sort of stop moving after a little bit, uh, just because it makes this the uh, the effect look a little bit better. So I can do this uh, just by selecting the end particles and in the channel box under the end particle shape node, I'll set the conserve to 0.95. And you can also do this in the attribute editor for the end particle shape. It's under dynamic properties conserved. Set that to 0.5. Let's move this out of the way. Rewind and play the scene. Now what's great about this technique is it's incredibly simple. At the moment I just have one single object influencing the uh, movement of the end particles. Uh, but I could have several different objects, each emitting a different force field, each having a different texture on them. Um, so you could actually make it very, very sophisticated as what's going on. Um, the other thing that's kind of cool is you can do things like if I actually you know, select the texture and in the attribute editor, I could set keyframes in the alpha gain. So you know if I set this to a negative value, it inverts everything. So if I set this to minus 5, and play the scene, then I'm going to have the reverse effect where now the fingertips are repelling the um, end particles and the white part of the palm is attracting them. So I'm going to set this back to an alpha gain of 5, positive 5, and I'll do a quick uh, play blast or hardware uh, render uh, so that we can just sort of see this in real time and, and see how the effect actually looks. So here's the uh, the animation I just did with a hardware render buffer really quickly so you can sort of see it in real time. It's kind of a neat effect. Again this ends up being about you know eight and a half minutes worth of work. Uh, just make sure that if you do use this in an actual animation uh, Make sure you tell the art director that you spent hours and hours and hours creating this effect. Um, it's always my awesome uh, my policy to mess with art directors. Um, okay, so there's one other cool trick I want to show you about this, uh, and again, this is just one of a, a million possibilities that you can use to fine tune the effect. So let's say we wanted the uh, end particles not to be visible unless they're moving so that it kind of looks like they're just coming out of thin air. It's like, really easy to do. So let me close this guy real quick. And this guy, we want the scene. I'm going to save this really quick. I will save the scene as hand scene end and it will be on the disk so you can take a look at it. Okay. And uh, I'm going to go into the attribute editor for the end particle, so I've selected the end particle, I'm in the end particle shape one tab, and under particle size, I'm going to expand radius scale and set this to speed. I'm going to lower this all the way down to zero so the end particles disappear, and create a slope that goes up towards the right. So we get something like this. Maybe I'll set this to spline so it's a little bit smoother. It's like this guy. Set him to spline as well. So we need something like this. So this means that the end particles only appear when they're moving. So if I rewind and play the scene, you can see how they kind of appear out of thin air and they kind of grow in size. Also, when they stop moving, they'll disappear as well. So uh, if I rewind the scene, and let's do another hardware render uh, so that you can see it in real time. Okay, and here is Play Blast to the effect. Pretty simple to set up and pretty nifty.
Okay, I hope that you've uh, enjoyed this tutorial and you get some good ideas for some uh, cool effects that you can use in your own animations. And I'll see you next time.